So the first thing is we'll need an application to actually do our drawing with. Now I use an application called Sketchbook Express. Now Sketchbook Express is simply a drawing program. So you can pick a colour, you draw, it's mainly for artists, there's a professional version as well, but the Express version is free. Alright, so I can undo that. So this picture here you might recognise from the previous section where we were talking about assessment. So I was drawing all over that. If I wanted to start a new thing, I simply start a new thing and I can draw. I pick colours and I draw. And then when I've finished, I come up here to stop recording and I've got it up here in my Camtasia window and I can drag it down into my timeline. Okay, so now once it's in my timeline, I can simply scrub through and you can see it's there. You can see it switch through. And one of the things you might notice is that the quality of this picture isn't as good as the quality you might have remembered seeing in the previous videos I was doing where I was doing the drawing. And the reason for that is that I'm capturing the entire screen, but I'm only recording this at 720p. Which you can see if I come here and go to adjust canvas, you can see there we have height 720. So in other words, this is a standard, not ridiculously high resolution, high definition resolution. But it's not as big as the entire screen, which means in order to compress the entire screen down to that resolution, you're going to get some kind of compression, and so it's not going to be quite as good. What would be better is if we were scaling this to the actual pixels. If I go scale to actual pixels, then you'll see I get a much clearer screen there. I can see a one-to-one -one mapping between each pixel on this screen and each pixel from when I was recording, and so my result's going to be heaps better. The disadvantage is that I can't see the entire screen. Here we've got this whole screen. In fact, a 720p box looks something like this. So now we're back in Camtasia. Let's see how you might process that. So you take the file, you take the image, and you can just drag it down to your timeline. You can do that more than once if you want to. But there it is down there. And if we scrub through, you can see me. I'm actually talking to you there. I'll just change the scale so I can see it better. You can see me talking to you there about this box. Okay, and this little flickering space there is the audio. So it's the audio, you can see me talking in little gaps where I'm drawing extra. And so I'm doing that, but all of this is the entire screen compressed down. So I just want to use a 720p window, so it's a one-to-one -one pixel to pixel ratio. And so I go hold down control there, and I go to scale, scale to actual pixels. And you can see now I have a subset of my screen. So now I have to grab this and drag it to get my subset of the screen. And you can see my box is almost right, so that's not quite on this bottom area here, but I was pretty good. A bit wider than I thought and not quite as deep as I thought. Anyway, so that's what it is. So you set it up how you want, and then what's a good thing to do is a good thing to copy the properties. So I copy the properties of that, and now when I take a second one, so if I was to drag another one down, here it is, there's another one down. So now if I go over onto this, we see exactly the same material again. And if I go control paste properties, they're both the same. And so now if I was to scrub through both of those, you can see they're all the same. So let's try and do something for real now. I'll pick a color to do a heading. Underline just like that. And maybe I'll remember what I was about to say after that. And so I'll start saying some first comment. And I might keep blathering and have some more. I'm on a roll now, so I'll go, oh yeah, you know, point 0.1. And then I'll go point 0.2. And then I'll write a big long thing. And then I'll try and recover because I'm used to I'm used to talking live, and so you don't get to just stop whenever you want. But I realise I'm blathering, so I'm going to bail out. So I go and I hit stop. Okay, so let's try and use this for good. So I take this thing down here onto my timeline, and I realise all right, I don't want to have any bit at the start, so I can drag that back to get rid of my noise get it nice and tight remember we're going for very high information density if I hit play here so let's try and do something for real now I'll pick a color to do a heading and I realize that all of this dead point all this quiet space here is when I was writing heading so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to this point and I'm going to cut so now to cut I go command T 
you can see it's split selection at playhead, command T. And I go over here and do the same thing. And now I want to make this bit faster. So I go up to video FX, clip speed, and you drag that onto the thing. And now you can just choose how much faster you want. I've got 100% here. I'm going to make that 2000%. That's my normal thing. Okay, now I've just realized that I'm recording the whole screen here and I wanted to do it much tighter than that. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go here and go control pro paste properties there, paste properties, and then over onto this one, paste properties. And now they will all be on my lovely tight space. And so this is me talking over blank. This is me writing heading. This is me talking again, blathering. And you can see I get to the first point. I've got another slow period. So I will command T, command T, and do the clip speed thing again. Clip speed, change the speed. The nice thing about this kind of process is that I can see how I went. So I can go back to this point and I can just hit play. And while it's playing, I can see if I'm happy. I can make sure my effects are good. Sometimes you're doing this and you realize this is a bit slow or I could have made that better. And you can delete now before you've done too much post-production. If you do very large chunks of recording before you do any editing, then you often find that you say, oh, that's good enough, even though it's not exactly what you want it. I see a small thing here. You might wonder whether it's worth speeding up just a few seconds. The answer is a few seconds feels like quite a lot when you're waiting. One of the reasons why I didn't uh, edit the thing I did before when I was recording, so you could feel, if you're feeling brave, go back and watch me writing this in slow motion and then watch what happens when I do it in full speed. I'll show you the full speed version in just a second by copying it in. So there we go. I don't even... I'm not even checking at this point because I'm assuming I did such a great job speaking. But what I would normally do is I would check that I'd done a reasonably good job speaking. Put those together. Oh, that big long thing was long, wasn't it? There's so many seconds. It's amazing in comedy and in teaching just how long 10 seconds of dead space is. All right, clip speed. To 18 seconds of dead space. That's incredible. All right chunk and we're compressing this mightily and then we've got this little bit at the end oh yeah that's right all of that was junk and so I simply hit delete and that's gone what do I do from there well what I do is I come back to this point and I hit play and I watch all that going through and I hear what I'm saying and I realize oh yeah okay so the next thing I need to say is blah and then I go back to write that Let's have a quick look at the edited version of that. So let's try and do something for real now. I'll pick a color to do a heading, underline just like that, and maybe I'll remember what I was about to say after that, and so I'll start saying some first comment, and I might keep blathering and have some more. I'm on a roll now, so I'll go, oh yeah, you know, point one, and then I'll go point two, and then I'll write a big long thing. Notice the difference between the live version and the compressed version after you've done your editing. It's fairly easy to do that editing, but it really takes a lot of the time out. And what you saw at the end, you saw was really quick. And you'll notice that when you rewatch that, the first version is absolutely torturously long and the second one is really fast. If you're feeling brave, try and rewatch that whole video again and you'll see what I mean.